Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video here at Tableman. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be taking a look at Mewtwo Star, Mewtwo V Star, sorry, with Lunaton Solrock. Um, I don't think this deck will show up to the Pokemon World Championships. I don't think it's really good enough, but I wanted to give it one last try before Worlds, uh, just in case. We have Mewtwo V Star side perch doing 90 damage up to uh, 270, depending on how many psychic energies you choose to discard, and Star Rate doing 120 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon V. Now, with this um, high damage threshold, you can combine that with Choice Belt and Galarian Sixagon for the extra damage and be able to take back to back one hit KOs on V Stars, which is definitely not something they appreciate. And then we also have Lunaton as an attacker with a Moon Kinesis attack doing 30 damage plus 30 more damage for his psychic energy attached to this Pokemon. Now we have Radiant Greninja and Crobat to help support the deck, along with a high amount of Research, Marty, and Avery, along with Boss's Orders to target down the right Pokemon. Three Trekking Shoes also help us draw cards. Quick Ball, Fog Crystal, and Ultra Ball help us in setting up. And then we have an Energy Search, Energy Switch, sorry, in case we need to switch an energy from a Lunatone to a Mewtwo to get back-to-back -back attacks. We have Training Court to get back energies. A decent amount of energies in nine, and we have Ordinary Rod to recover any lost pieces along the way, along with Palpat, to make sure that we have access to boss's orders at some point in the game. So, pretty cool deck, pretty straightforward. Let's jump to the ladder, see how it does. If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it, and it's free. Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailman code when checking out for 5% off. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed product or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. If you're looking for sealed product, Paladin Cards has some of the best deals and you can get 5% off any purchase with code Tableman5. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website, PokemonCard.io. All right, somehow we have um, Hooligan, despite having uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 basic Pokemon. Now we start the Soul Rock, which is decent. Unfortunately, we are going second, um, which could be good, I guess, if we end up getting an attack on turn one, but that's not guaranteed. Okay, so... We are up against Stone Journer, which if we can apply enough pressure through Mewtwo V Star, we should be good. Um, they immediately start to push Jake, which is crazy, right? Just getting everything going immediately. Um, okay, so pressuring as much as I can, right? That is the goal. So I'm gonna grab a Lunatone here. And then I'm going to go ahead and Tracking Shoes. Probably should have used Tracking Shoes first. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess we're not going to be recovering anything this game. And of course, I topped like another card that I would probably want to recover. Okay. <laughs> great start. Really, really great start right here. Um, we're going to get the Soul Rock. We're going to play the Training Court. And we're going to Research. All right. Okay. So, I only have two Salt Rocks, right? Which means I'm out of luck. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to establish the Mewtwo as well. And then what I'm going to do is... Alright, I have one Psychic in the discard pile right now. I do want to Quick Ball away the boss. Grab a Crobat. And then I should attach, right? Should attach retreat. Gosh, that I should attach energy switch. Hmm. Maybe I should just give up on attacking with Lunatone and attack with Mewtwo next turn. My Soul Rock isn't threatened, right? So, yeah, I guess I'll do that then. I'll attach to Mewtwo. I've given up on attacking with Lunatone this turn. <clears throat> yep. Uh, sure, discard that. I mean, I guess there's still a chance. I get a scoop up net off of this Radiant Greninja. 
I guess I'll, I'll try. I'll definitely try. All right. Scoop up that. No. All right. We're just going to go sun energy to the Lunatone. Sun energy to the Lunatone. And then should I get an energy back right here? No. We'll just pass. All right. So not the... Not the best start. They can get back to back big attacks with Mewtwo. I feel like that next card. <laughs> That's okay. Um. All right. So I have guaranteed attachment off of the training cord. So I can definitely afford to do this, and then I can go Sun Energy on the Lunatone, then Sun Energy on the Lunatone again. And then I can scoop up net the Soul Rock. And then I just need to do as much damage as possible, right? That's all I need to do. So I can rebench you. And then I can go energy switch. And then I can just discard all the energies off of the Lunatone. Right? One, two, three. That way the active is fully powered up. My opponent needs to essentially fully heal in order to have a chance here. And if the stadium sticks, I have guaranteed 270 damage every single turn. So that's got to be a lot for my opponent to deal with, right? Like a lot, a lot. <clears throat> All right. All righty. All right, so here we go once again. I mean, they did heal, but how many um, hyper potions can they be holding? You know, like every turn they can heal 120, sure, thanks to the training cord or whatnot. But I mean, I would appreciate a I would appreciate a choice belt, wouldn't I? Maybe I should research here. Well, I only have one choice belt left, though. Nah, I'd rather try and chase the damage here. That could also potentially be useful. And I do have the Marnie. So you know what? Sure. Let's go conceal cards once. See if we can get that choice belt. No. Okay. That's all right. 270 damage. Back to back to back to back to back. 240 now. 30. Thanks to the stone energy and... The full face guard. But that's okay. They go poke gear. Eventually they have to fit with healing enough damage, I feel. <laughs> they heal 120 and I deal 230. That would be knockout, so they need more. Alright, well that does it. That definitely does it. Okay, they do end up benching another friend. And they go research. They did discard a stone generator, however. A VMAX. So can they keep up with the damage? That's the question. If they can, then they should be able to win. But hopefully they can. So this next turn, I'm going to go Marty. Because that probably gets me close enough to the choice belt at this point and eliminates their big, big hand. All right. So they have... Oh, and the choice belt actually means... Um, I get a knockout here, so I should absolutely go for it. All right. There it is. So we're going to go Sun Energy. <clears throat> There's the choice belt. I had almost full look into my deck with the trekking shoes and the marty so that was pretty good and then i can do this and then here's the choice belt and now i get the knockouts not bad not bad at all perfect maths perfect perfect math thanks to that choice belt just enough damage all right we get a boss which is probably useless we get another choice belt, also probably useless. <clears throat> and we have nine cards 
left as well. There's two energy left in the deck as well. They do end up benching another stone journer. And they will do, I guess, a little bit of damage with the card press. So they're reducing 40. That's nowhere near enough though. And since I'm pretty sure they play training court, I have guaranteed to run well 300 damage each and every single turn now. There's nothing they can do about that. Despite doing like the 40 damage doesn't matter at all. Doesn't save them from getting KO'd. I even have resistance, so it's 10. I didn't even realize that. So we'll just power up, power up, get back the energy. And it's I feel like it's a losing battle for them. And this is how you beat this sort of deck. Like just doing as much damage as you can, applying as much pressure as you can. And because I can discard energy from the bench, I never have to worry about attaching to the active. This friend is now gone. And now there's one stone journer to be dealt with. I have 16 cards left. I still have a Marnie. So this game should absolutely be over at this point. All right. There's a VMAX, which is fine. That means I don't win next turn, but that's okay. <laughs> Any turn they don't heal, they're in trouble. All right, they'll get back the energy. Match. Sun energy, sun energy, and just do the same thing over and over. Now let's see what they have in store for us right here. Can they survive another attack? I'm going to guess no. But you never know. That's a clean 300 damage. That means next turn I get a, they need to be, they need to heal at least 280 of that 300 damage to survive. And even if they do, I have six seconds, so they need to heal 290 of the 300 damage. Uh, it seems like they did it. <laughs> I'm 10 damage off the knockout. I am 10 damage off the KO here. So I would need to find another scoop of net, which I feel like I should have decent enough odds to get if they don't attach a, attach a stone energy or another full face guard. So they're just out of, okay, now they're fully out of range. They attach for a turn and what? <laughs> wow, they really messed that up. What? That made no sense. Okay, on to next match. All right, game two. So it always feels nice to beat uh, that sort of deck, I feel. I don't know about you, but it always feels nice. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to start the Greninja, because then I can scoop it up, draw extra cards. Um, Shadow Rider Calyrex uh, Sleeves. <clears throat> and a Mew Coin. Um, I'm getting a Psychic deck, but we'll see. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay. So it seems like we're up against the Mirror Match. Um, jeez. Okay, well, then going first now seems like a bad call. But what can you do, right? Um, okay, so... Hmm. Radiant Greninja, not, yeah, has the best chance at surviving a hit, I guess. So I should leave it in the active. Ugh. <laughs> An awful, awful mirror match. Okay. So can they get four energy onto the active Lunatone? That is the question. Three is... Wow. <laughs> I'll have one way to start the game. That's for sure. That is one way to start the game. <laughs> one energy in this card pile.
two energy in this card pile. Three energy. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. Okay, so now that this has happened, my radiant ninja is probably gone. Ah! Oh! What? Oh, please punish that play. No, come on. You're kidding me. Oh, they don't have a psychic in the discard pile. Wow. Do they actually have a way to discard another psychic? No way. They're doing things so badly. <laughs> What is going on here? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Well, my opponent really, like, really messed up this past turn. Like, I cannot explain how badly my opponent messed up this past turn. Like, I, it's... Okay. Now, it's on me. I just need to not whiff an energy, and we're gonna be in a very, very good spot. Alright, so... My goal right now is to find one energy that's it okay that's it just one energy please deck do not fail me i don't want you okay the avery is actually pretty tempting here over the varney but if i don't get an energy i'm gonna be kicking myself so i want to save that avery for later i will however thin <clears throat> that was another of these okay I have five psychics, that means I price two, which is really unfortunate, and one fog crystal, which I also price two of. Unbelievable. <laughs> Please don't whiff. Okay. Jeez, I was a little bit scared right there. I generally was a little bit scared. Okay, now I can afford to discard this as I do have the Soul Rock power up. I got another energy, which is fantastic. So now all I need to worry about is powering up enough Lunatones and eventually finishing off with Mewtwo. Or I can just focus on the Lunatones too. So we should be good. I'll bench the third Soul Rock and now we take the knockout. I can't believe how badly my opponent whiffed or like misplayed. They didn't whiff. They had everything. They got the perfect cards off of the Pokestop. They even got the Psychic off of the Trekking Shoes and then they messed everything up. They researched away useful stuff they didn't research away the psychic um they didn't attach the psychic to the active that's all they needed to do attach the psychic to the active that is all that is generally all they had to do attach psychic to the active and then they didn't <laughs> so now it's on me to just not with an attack right i do have four lunatones one is in the discard pile but i have mute to take the last price card They are down two rescue carriers, so they could end up whiffing at some point as well. <laughs> now they put four energy on Lunathone when, once again, it does not make sense. They go after the Radiant Greninja, that is completely okay. They have apparently a Vendetta against that because it survived last turn. I, I don't even know. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> but hey, I'll take it. No, yeah, I will absolutely take it. Okay, so I would really like to Avery my opponent. That is definitely what I would like to do. And then going after Greninja puts less pressure on my Lunatones as well. So this is just like the icing on the cake. Um, Just attack again. No need to do anything else. All I need to do is be able to attack six times back to back to back. And I will win the match. It's that simple. My opponent really messed up on turn one. They had the advantage and they threw it away. And then they're sequencing after the research to try and make up for the mistake, which they realized, as you could tell, they scoop up net at first and then they played the trekking shoes, which makes no sense. You would play the trekking shoes first because if you don't hit, then you, they just wasted a scoop up net. So 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. They have the perfect start with a Poke stop, the tracking shoes, the raw double battle VIP pass, and then they threw it all away. Yeah. And this is something that I tell um, a lot of the people that I coach. A lot of, like, I generally win a lot of games of Pokemon way more than you would expect, simply because I make less mistakes than my opponents. Simple as that. Yeah. And I'm going to win this game only because of my opponent's mistake. Like, I had a sort of backup plan, I guess. I did have double library to potentially um, help me deal with my opponent. But generally, I'm going to win this game because my opponent royally messed up. Um, I could be playing against Tord's alternate account. Um, so, someone of equal skill level. Or I could play against a brand new player. What determines is the fact that my opponent made a huge mistake. And now it's on me to make a mistake, right? But I pride myself in 20 years of playing Pokemon at the highest level. Um, I make very few mistakes. When I do, they're very costly. I will say that. But um, I make way less mistakes in real life than I do um, recording, playing, etc. Right? So I get some people who call me out like, Hey, I can't believe you do well at tournaments. You suck because you're so bad look at your videos blah blah it's like okay well i would like to invite you to play um play properly at the highest level uh record in your non-native language keeping everything in check making everything look pretty edit etc there's just so much that goes behind the scenes that people don't realize or um understand uh, but anyways that's besides the point my point is you win more games of pokemon simply by making less mistakes than your opponent regardless of the matchup regardless of whoever it is usually you make the least amount of like whoever makes the least amount of mistakes will end up building a big advantage and that's why players who do consist like that's why players do consistently well those players who do consistently well they're not making a lot of mistakes over and over i'm winning this I have an inferior Lunaton Soul Rock pack, and I'm only winning this because my opponent either didn't do the maths, didn't realize how many energies they needed, and I I made a good decision, right? I analyzed the situation and I made the really good decision to leave the Greninja in the active to make sure or to force my opponent to have the most amount of to need the most amount of cards to get the KO. And they had them. They for some reason simply chose not to play them. You know? Okay. Now, I'm making a mistake right now. I've been playing very passively, right? Uh, building on this advantage. What I need to do right now is um, hunt down my ordinary rod. And I should have done that the turn before. Yeah, so now I'm the one that's been um, making a mistake. Okay, my opponent's down two bosses orders. What are the chances that they play three? I feel like not very high. So I'm going to go ahead and bench this Mewtwo and attach to it but what I really need is the um the ordinary rod right I really really do need that ordinary rod right here so I think I've just made another mistake actually I'll quick ball away this Okay, I want these two cards at the very bottom of my deck, and I'll go Morny. Okay, I really need my Ordinary Rod right about now. Okay, and there it is, and a Quick Ball, so that's absolutely perfect. Two of the cards that I really needed. Okay, I do have two Psychics in the discard pile. Alright, I'm going to Ordinary Rod, and I'm going to do both. I'm going to put back two Lunatones, and one Psychic. Keep one Psychic in the discard pile, then I'll go ahead and quick ball away. <clears throat> Scoop of net for a Lunatone piece. Now I have the backup, right? And then, drop this friend. Let's go ahead and trekking shoes. Uh, don't need that. And that's a beautiful, beautiful card to get. Okay. So I was, I was, because I was explaining <laughs> how much I don't make mistakes, I was about to make a big mistake, or I was making a mistake of being too passive, right? That was my mistake. Um, 
All right. Heavy ball. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so the worst thing that they could do is boss KO this to finish the game. However, um, that would require a lot from them, like a lot, a lot. And they don't even have a backup Lunatone that they can power up. They're down two bosses orders, which I'm guessing, um, are not, um, like I'm guessing either they only have one left, but even if they do, right, I'm going to be at one price card next turn after attack with Lunatone, and I'll have two attackers set up. So unless they can one-shot 280 damage on a Mewtwo V-Star, which is literally impossible for them, the game's over. Yeah, the game is absolutely over. <laughs> and this is another thing. My opponent doesn't realize it, right? We're continuing to play, which, based on what they did in the first turn um you can tell that my opponent is playing their cards right that's what they're doing they are playing they're attaching energy to an active loan tone for whatever reason yeah they are playing their cards they have not deciphered or made any sort of plan to win the game and that's another thing that it gives me a big advantage against most people that i play against a lot of people that i play against they are playing their cards, right? They're looking at their cards, they're looking at their board, and they're figuring out every possible thing that they can do. But they're not really thinking about how they're going to win the game. And that's something that I really work a lot on in coaching. Yeah, this change of mentality. It's not about everything. It's not about... Like, you don't win more by playing all the cards that you could during your turn, right? Sometimes there's way more value in not playing a card than there is in playing a card. So that's something I really emphasize during um, during coaching. This, this switch from the question of what do I do this turn to how do I win the game, right? Because then all of a sudden you need to start considering all of your opponent's um, side of the field what they can possibly do during their next turn perhaps their next two turns or three turns yeah and i can tell you right now in this particular video i could have told you exactly what was going to happen in each and every single turn for the next six turns for both of us after they finish their turn one and i finish my turn one and that's another thing like i i have that sort of vision yeah whereas most players are playing their turn they end their turn and then that's it. Then they look and see what happens during their opponent's next turn. But there's no real attempt at figuring out how they're going to win, who they're attacking, price mapping, all of that. There's just none of it. Yeah, there's generally none of it. Okay, so now I'm in the situation where I need one psychic energy. No, not even. Okay, now they realized. Um, I had the backup blue netone, so I didn't need a psychic energy to win the game. Um, but anyways... I feel like that that game, this game in particular, shows you the value of this change of mindset. Yeah, if you're uh, looking to improve, if you're looking to really build up, um, like get to the next level. Yeah, and I I promise you, I'm trying. Like I'm not trying to show off or anything. I'm just saying. Like there's a reason why I've been a top player for 20 years in this game yeah arguably the best player at many points um during the game's history and it's because of this mindset of i look at the game as a whole not just as my cards and my side of the field and i win more games than you would imagine not because i am better than my opponents yeah not because I have more skill or my deck is better built. No, the reason I win more is simply because I make less mistakes. And how do you make less mistakes? By factoring in and analyzing as much as you can during a game. Yeah. And having said that, um, if you're looking to get coaching, 
um, if you're looking to get ready for the 2023 uh, Pokemon season, I would definitely invite you to either DM me for more information or check out my Metafy page um, to book. Yeah, I won't be available throughout August, but I will be available in September. And depending on my final placement at Worlds, I will definitely be making a um, coupon for people who want to sign up for coaching in September. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.